it could be the littlest thing. You can be like, girl, I have this matcha tea. It's so good. I drink it all the time. You should try it. And she'll be like, mm, I drink loose leaf Ceylon. That's almost an exact situation <laughs> and experience. What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today, the topic is about jealousy and envy in friendships. Now, this is a tough topic. I mean, this is something that's sensitive to most people because if we're honest, most of us have dealt with jealousy and or envy in our own hearts at some point in our lives. And on top of that, we wouldn't really like to find out that our own friends, the people who we love the most, could be holding those feelings towards us. It also seems like sometimes you've gotta be full of yourself to think that someone's gonna be jealous or envious of you, but you'd be surprised, you know, if you don't know the signs and you don't understand the insecurities of other people, you would never fully know just how often these insecurities happen and fester into jealousy or envy. It doesn't matter how confident or secure you are, you could be the most insecure person on earth and everyone could be jealous or envious of you. And it's just because they see something you don't or they see something in you that they don't see in themselves. And we're really gonna get into what that means, but I wanna take this slow and really dig into the details of this. First of all, your heart posture is gonna be really important in how you deal with the information that you gain from this video. Keep in mind, you should not be happy about someone being jealous or envious of you. Us as humans kind of want to be flattered sometimes, but it's not really a good thing at all. That just means that you've taken an arrogant stance and you're happy about, you know, the fact that people think you're higher than them. So that must mean that you want people to be lower than you. So just try to check your emotions as you're watching this video. If you start to notice, yeah, I definitely have a friend who's jealous of me or envious of me. And on the other hand, try not to be offended if you find that when your friends are jealous or envious of you because similarly, you want to be humble about this. You may have been tempted by these emotions by you know, strangers, or you might have felt a little glimpse of jealousy towards a friend, but decided not to express it, decided to resolve it within yourself. Or maybe there was a time when you actually did act on your jealousy or envy in the past, and you have resolved that in your heart and you wouldn't do it again, but you just wanna extend that same empathy to anyone else and just kind of express a grievance of the fact that this person had the temptation for jealousy or envy and they weren't strong enough to handle it. And you might even be watching this video and start to realize, wait, these things are kind of describing me and how I feel towards my friend. And you're coming to the conclusion that maybe you are jealous or envious of your friends. And look, this is a judgment-free zone. You know, so many people deal with it. Like I've said, it's really hard to handle these emotions. But what's important for right now is that you acknowledge every emotion that's coming up as you hear things especially if you're feeling a little bit defensive or trying to make excuses for yourself in the way that you approach um, your friendships or your thoughts about people. Because if something stirs you up on the inside and makes you feel uncomfortable, it's probably something that needs to be resolved in you. So process those emotions and with that, you will gain the wisdom that's gonna give you the information you need to kind of figure out what's going on. But don't jump to conclusions. If you have one or maybe even just two of these signs and you find that in a friend or you find that in yourself, that does not automatically mean jealousy. It does not automatically mean envy, especially when you take into account the differences between people. We're all just flawed people and we tend to have you know, quirks and things that need to change in us, but that doesn't automatically mean that it's jealousy. It doesn't automatically mean that it's envy. Sorry if my voice is cracking. And the last thing I wanna add in before we really get into it, is how to take action. So what do you do when you realize that your friend seems to be jealous or envious of you? You can open the conversation with them, but I would not suggest saying, hey, I feel like you're jealous of me because no one really takes that well, especially if they don't know they're jealous of you. Instead, take those specific traits that you found in them that I'm gonna mention in this video and talk about that specific thing. I noticed that this has been happening and it's been making me feel uncomfortable. I noticed that this has also been going on and I don't really understand why you're doing that. And I just wanted to talk about it. And you really don't have to talk, especially if you have a friend that's been you know, pretty questionable and you don't really know what's going on with them. They've been acting really funny and this video is just kind of like you're, okay, I get it now. I see what's going on. You don't have to, you are not obligated to hold a conversation with that person. I don't care what nobody says. You can set your boundary by not saying another word. On the other hand, if you find out that you might be jealous or envious of a friend, 
you can do the same thing. Take distance from them. You don't have to like ghost them because they didn't really do anything wrong. But if it's easier for you to take some space from them and really try to process those emotions and figure out what insecurities are causing you to feel that way, that would be helpful. Otherwise, if you have like the strength and the confidence to really just have that conversation with them, you can verbally explain to them what you're feeling or you can just say that I'm starting to feel a little bit jealous and I'm starting to feel a little bit of envy and I want to work this out. I want to respect you by giving you the space while I'm trying to figure it out. I hope you can understand. Whew, well, that was supposed to be the introduction, but I felt like that was kind of a lot to say. And as you can tell, this video is pretty serious to me and there's a lot that goes into it. So buckle in, buddies. <laughs> if you're ready to hear it, then let's go ahead and get on into it. So let's dive into the actual meanings of jealousy and envy and the implications of it and the overall expression of them. With jealousy, I define this word personally. I created a definition. I'm going to read it to you. Jealousy is an emotional response due to the perceived threat of being overpowered by someone else. So it's a power struggle. It causes you to feel vulnerable to another person's existence. This is just like a cliche example. But let's say you're the cutest girl in school and you're in like high school and everyone loves you. And then all of a sudden a new girl comes in and she's a different type of pretty and everyone wants to get to know her. And you're now you're jealous of her because you're like, oh, crap, she's going to take all the attention away from me. And then you start to get these negative feelings towards this girl who's really done nothing wrong. She just showed up. That's an example of jealousy. So this is my definition of envy. Envy is an emotional response due to someone else having something you desire. So this is a perception of being inferior to someone, an inferiority complex. An example of this is let's say like, your friend is hilarious. Everyone's always cracking up when your friend is talking. And you, uh, you don't really have the strongest sense of humor. You never have the right timing for your jokes and they tend to fall flat. And you just hate the fact that your friend gets all the laughs and you don't, and you wish that you could make people laugh. So every time your friend is like telling jokes and stuff, you're just sitting in the corner rolling your eyes. That's an example of envy. Jealousy is related to vulnerability of, you know, weaknesses, something that someone can take away from you. Envy is related to inferiority. Someone else is already stronger. Someone else already has the thing that you wish that you had. So it's almost like jealousy is when it's you and what you have, and then someone else comes in and now you're thinking that there's a tension to keeping it. Envy is when there's someone else and what they have and then you're pulling at it because you wanna take it from them. Does that make sense? And with these things, what I wanna say as a statement is extreme perspectives, which is what it means to think that people can be more powerful than others. Extreme perspectives reap extreme responses because they're very sensitive to you. It could be a positive response, it could be negative, but it's not gonna be like normal. And this is really important because your idea of what's normal in the grand scheme of things might make you feel like, okay, that, that's, I guess that's normal, but it's really a personal thing. Like, okay, it's normal for a person to act like this in general, but is it normal for people to act like this towards you in those particular types of situations? Is that person normally treating everyone the way that they're treating you? Like, what is the really definition of extreme in your personal specific situation? You have to have the discernment to understand that for yourself. And I've had a situation where I realized that a friend was jealous and or envious of me. And I was telling our mutual friends about what was going on. And they were really telling me like, no, like you're tripping. They, they would never do that. And I'm like, but you can't tell me I'm tripping because it's like, then what is it? This is not normal. You really just have to trust your gut. Don't consult other people. If it's a mutual friend, they're gonna have a bias because chances are that mutual friend like doesn't receive the same treatment, sees that person in a totally different way because they're jealous or envious of you, not everybody. You know, there's probably other people, but you're one of them. You're not one of the millions, you know what I mean? So just keep that in mind, like any extremities, extremes, and also the fact that you're gonna be the one to be able to tell, not other people. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about what you all have been waiting for. I broke them up into two categories. Now, some of them do overlap. In general, I'm starting off with traits of jealousy. First point is love bombing. Another term that I personally like to use for this as a good explanation is fan energy. Now, there's a difference between being a supporter and a fan. Let's make that so clear. 
I'm not saying that if someone supports you openly that they're acting like a fan. That's just rude and arrogant. If you were a celebrity, right, and you actually had fans, and you also had friends, do you expect your fans and your friends to see you the same way? No, because a fan doesn't see you clearly. They just see you for the good things about you that they like. And that sounds a lot like jealousy to me. And that's not to say if you're a fan of someone that you're jealous of them. That just means that if you were a fan of someone, it would be really hard to be actually friends with them because you'd still be looking at them through the lens of what they do that you like. The term fan energy is helpful in just kind of creating the difference between a supporter, like true genuine love and support versus someone who's overwhelmingly loving you in a way that's not even authentic love. You know so look at it from your own personal perspective are they treating you with more love than your parents or your partner would are they treating you with more love than like the rest any of the rest of your friends and i'm not saying like oh if this friend is more supportive than the rest of your friends that's the jealous one it's not always the case but there should be a natural level of support and love that comes from people who actually love you and if you know like these five people love you and this is the person you're wondering if they're jealous of you and this person happens to be the person who's just like overwhelmingly gassing you up when you do something well or whatever. Yeah, this might fall into that category. And you'd probably be wondering where does that come from? Well, really it's a manipulation tactic. It's smoke and mirrors because they're trying to mask the frustration that they feel when you do things well. Here's a good example of that. You ever watch like a pageant like Miss America or something. All the girls are standing there on the stage and they're all smiling and waiting for the winner to be announced. And then the winner is announced and all of them are like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Now, I'm not saying they're not, but I'm just saying sometimes you can tell when looking at them that some of them are not so happy. They might be like <laughs> fighting back tears or they might be like so excited that it's almost as if they won. Um, my dog just farted. <laughs> Truth of the matter is that response is a facade, especially if you can't see their face, like it's all through text or something. It's usually a facade. And if you have the opportunity to see the alternative, it would be irritation on their face. Or maybe sometimes it is in person and for a quick second, you see that they're a little bothered, but then they quickly are like, oh, oh my gosh. It's like they quickly try to hide their true emotions so that you don't pick up on the fact that they feel a type of way. Another trait that shows up in jealousy is that the person despises your kindness. And that's not only in jealousy, but this happens with envy as well. It's almost like, okay, so you've got all these good things about you and you're a nice person. Like people don't want for someone to be good on the inside and out. They don't like the idea that they have these negative feelings and thoughts about you and you only have nice things to say to them compliments to give to them that are genuine because they don't desire to lift you up in the same way that you are lifting them up so then it again makes them feel inferior and makes them feel vulnerable like you have a sense of power over them because you have this character trait and on top of that it's hard to hate a good person i mean you don't always hate the person you're jealous of but you kind of have to hate the person you're envious of so when this shows up in a space of envy that definitely applies here when you give this person a compliment, they're either going to respond blatantly negatively, like you say something, they're like, shut up, or like, girl, get out of here. Like they don't want to accept the compliment and it's not in a like an insecure, like, oh, this old thing. It's more so like a, you shouldn't have said that type of way. Or they would respond significantly positively, like give you a better compliment in response. For example, you would be like, ooh, I really like those shoes. And they'll be like, thank you so much, gorgeous. You're so sweet. And it's just kind of like, whoa. <laughs> but the thing is that they're kind of competing with you in that as well, because they don't like the fact that you have a one up in whatever else they're jealous about. So they don't want you to one up them with the complimenting either. They want to keep up with you. Which brings me to the next point, which is competitiveness. People who get really angry in competition, they're likely jealous or envious people in nature for one. But jealous friends are usually in secret competition with you 24 seven. It could be the littlest thing. You can be like, girl, I have this matcha tea. It's so good. I drink it all the time. You should try it. And she'll be like, mm, I drink loose leaf Ceylon. And it's like, okay. And she'll be like saying it in an arrogant tone. <laughs> it's really funny because I'm actually like, that's almost an exact situation <laughs> I've experienced. 
it's weird that they'll try to compete with you or compare every little detail of your lives. Do you do this this way? Oh, I do it that way. It's like everything they're trying to weigh up against you. If you start a business, they're probably going to start the same business within a month. They might. <laughs> if you cut your hair, they might cut their hair. If you start wearing bright lipstick, they might start wearing bright lipstick. They'll do what you do and try to like do it better or just simply take the attention off of you. So as we're talking about envy, it gets a little bit more malicious than jealousy. First starting off is isolation in group settings or even like in group chat conversations. They're likely to pin people up against you because they're strength in numbers, right? So they can weaken you if they have more people on their side to strengthen themselves. They'll try to show more attention or love to everyone else and kind of make you invisible, talk over you so that you're not heard. They want you to feel invisible and feel like you're just completely unimportant. They really want to silence you. They may even bully you, make fun of you, pick at you just so that you feel humiliated. Like I said, envy is all about belittling someone. So they're just going to try to do whatever they can to chip at your confidence and make you feel small. This also means they're liable to highlight your flaws, whether directly or indirectly. They might play around and pretend that they're talking about their own flaws. Be like, oh, I hate that my, oh, my cheeks are so fat. I hate it. But you have fat cheeks. <laughs> and so let's say they say that just to see how you would respond to it. And you're like, oh yeah, I got fat cheeks too. I just have to get over it. And if they respond, you know, you say something self-deprecating and then they respond with positive responses like a laugh or a smile. That's just a sign that they were hoping for you to say something self-deprecating. They really just wanna figure out what you're insecure about so that they can poke holes in your existence and just make you feel small, weak, and bring your insecurities to light. They want to bring your insecurities to the top of your mind so it's something that you're thinking about and something that you're aware that other people are paying attention to. Or maybe there's a time when you're trying to be vulnerable and express yourself to a friend and they're really dismissive or isolating in their response. Like let's say you tell this person you're like, I've, I've gotten cheated on in every relationship I've ever been in. And their response is, oh pff, girl couldn't be me. I don't know how you do it. Or something like that where it's like, dang, all right, <laughs> that was very not supportive. That's the kind of situation where they want you to feel insecure about your weaknesses. And lastly with gossip is when they're talking about you behind your back. You know, somebody's probably watching this and is like, how on earth would I know someone's talking about me behind my back if it's behind my back? And I get that, I truly do. But sometimes, do you ever just know? Like you really just gotta know sometimes. And there are ways to know. I think one of the most important things you should practice consistently is not telling everybody your business. If you tell this one friend something and you make sure you've only told one person this, and it, let's say this is a juicy secret, something that nobody else should know, but you've got mutual friends, you will be able to tell if the other friends want you to talk to them about it because they'll try to talk about things around it, see if you'll open up about it, or they'll simply act like they know. They'll act like they know. And you just have to be receptive to these things, not searching for it, but just if you notice, hmm, that's interesting that they said that when I told so-and-so about this last week. But with gossip, people use this specifically as a power trope because for one, if you know a lot of things about a person that are true because they told you, then you have this leverage of, I have credible information about this person. So you can turn people away from someone who you know something for sure about. It's like you give the impression that you know them very well so that people are going to trust everything you say about them. When you detach yourself from a person like this, they can no longer really have an influence over people's thoughts of you because they don't even have access to you. On top of that, they want to influence your reputation so if they can get people to turn away from you, just as like I've mentioned earlier with the isolation thing, if they can get people to agree that you suck or you're a bad person or that you're not worth liking, then they'll feel more powerful and they'll feel like they can weaken you. But yeah, the best way to understand or perceive gossip behind your back is discernment, really paying attention to what's going around, notice any group energy shifts. It's not really going to work if there's no like community between you two. If this is just a one on one friendship, then them gossiping to their other friends, you're never going to find out. And it wouldn't really matter either because they can't really change their opinion on you when they never met you or don't even really care for you, you know? So the gossip really applies for like when you're in a community and envy really mostly just applies when you're in a community 
with this person because how are they going to take something from you if they don't have access to anything you have? Yet they can always still chip away at your confidence, chip away at your self-esteem by just saying things, planting seeds. Um, that can always happen. So I wouldn't put it past anyone. It's just that this is more likely to happen in group settings when people are jealous about things other people might prefer in you rather than them, if that makes sense. So that's pretty much it. That sums up the video. But I hope this has given you the information that you need. I could totally make it like a part two about this because there's so much information. I actually kept some things off the list because I didn't want to go too overboard with this video. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, then like it and I'll see you next time. Bye.